Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up DuckStation for the PC. DuckStation is a new PS1 emulator that works amazingly well and has a lot of cool new features. It is a great alternative if you don't want to use something like ePCSXE or something else. So without further ado, let's get down to it. Firstly, go to your search engine of choice and type in DuckStation Download. Look for here and then go to this website. Whilst on the main page, scroll down till we get to Downloads. Look for the latest build and click on that. Once downloaded, make a folder on your desktop and call it DuckStation and then move the zip file into there and unzip it. Once that's done, everything should look a little bit like this. Now, we need to make two brand new folders at this point because they're not there and you need to make them yourself. Make one folder and then call it either games or ROMs depending on your personal choice. Next, make another folder and then call it BIOS. I can't help you with this next part but you are going to need to get a BIOS in order for this program to run. It's a bit disappointing because I was hoping that this program would be a little bit like Redream and not need a BIOS, but sadly it does. So you're going to need to get your BIOS from your own PlayStation 1 console that you own. Once you have that and it's in the correct format, put it in the BIOS folder. With these done, we can now load up DuckStation and I recommend that you use this version here first as it's just easier to use and it's a much nicer interface to work with. When you do this, you might get a message pop up from Windows or your antivirus. If you do, just ignore it because it's a false positive and run the program anyway. Once opened up, we're going to need to configure a few things. So head on over to settings and click on general. Now, we have quite a few menus which we'll need to fiddle with. The first thing we're going to need to do is tell the program where the BIOS is. Select BIOS and then scroll down to Browse in the directory and then select the folder where you put it in. Now with that out of the way, you're going to need to figure your controller. Head on over to here and then from here we'll get several menus and choices. For me, I am using an Xbox 360 controller but you might be using something different, so adjust these to your choice of preference. Make sure that you save the profile just before you leave, just in case you ever need it again. Next, let's head on over to display. You can mess with a few things here, but I recommend that you leave this on Vulkan. This part here shows a graphics card that's being used. For me, since I'm on my studio PC, that's what's being shown here. Yours will obviously be quite different. Here I recommend that you keep VSync on to stop screen tearing and then from here we can mess with the aspect ratio. We can have 16.9, 4.3, a whole host of various others to choose from. For now I recommend that you select 16.9 because we're also going to be fiddling with a little something else in the next part. Here, let's select Enhancements. This part shows internal resolution, which is currently set at 720p. If we click on this option, we get more to choose from, ranging from 1080p, 4K, or even higher. For the purpose of this video, I am just going to simply stick with 720p. If you're going to go higher than this, then you really will need a decent GPU if you're planning on running anything on 4K or higher. Now, here is something really special. This is a proper widescreen hack mod and it works beautifully. I will be honest, it doesn't work with everything. If you are going to use this, it is best to use it on true 3D rendered games like Resident Evil Gun Survivor, Soul Edge or other games like that. It tends to not like 2D scrolling games like Captain Commando, as they were never designed with 16.9 in mind, 
and were always created with the idea that they would always be 4.3. So if you do force this widescreen mod on some of these games, it can confuse them and thinks objects are located differently from where they actually are. The widescreen hack is something that you will need to fiddle with yourself to see what it does and doesn't work with with what games. Our next step is to organise the game library. Duckstation can read image files, bin in queue, and honestly it shouldn't really matter what format you convert your games to, it pretty much is able to see all of them. What we do now is, is we go and click on games list and head over to this plus icon. From here we need to organise a directory from where the games folder is that you made. Remember to put your games in there before you do this, which is plainly obvious but I just feel like I need to say anyway. And then once that's done we need to click done and it should show up and open up and look a little bit something like this. If you want to play your games you can simply just double click on them and they should load up and they should look absolutely wonderful. However, depending on your file type selection, some games might not show up. If this does happen, simply go to System, Start File, and then navigate to where that game is if it didn't show up, double click on it, and then the game should boot up. A final thing to mention about DuckStation is that DuckStation regularly updates automatically, so you shouldn't ever have to worry about being with an outdated version. Well, that should be all that you need guys. If you do have any issues or problems, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you.